So, very good morning to you all. So, you are all welcome on behalf of Central Library as well as the Vishwabharati Library Network. So, as you know, today is the day three of our consecutive six day academic research skill development program. Day one and day two, we have completed successfully with lots of interaction with the speaker among the participants. And today, we are going to start our day three on learning management system as tools by academic discourse. So today's our speaker, as you all are familiar with uh, uh, him, Dr. Tink Thonkar Ghosh, very popular young faculty member from Department of Statistics, Institute of Science, Vishwa Bharati. By training a uh, statistician and has teaching experience more than 18 years. University topper in master class, he was a postdoc at FSU USA during the time 2013 to 2017. His research interests include applied statistics, weather and climate, especially tropical cyclones. Dr. Ghosh is inclined towards application of technologies in teaching. He introduced online teaching and test in his classes since 2018. During COVID, he and one of his colleagues prepared an LMS to support online teaching for the community. And it was, it has been a tremendous success. And he has published his research work in many international journals of repute. A few of them are IEEE transactions on reliability, communications in statistics, International Journal Quality and Reliability Management, Weather and Forecasting, Advancement in Metrology, Ecological Informatics, Ecological Indicators, Reviews of Geophysics, Journal uh, of Remote Sensing, Calcutta Statistical Association Bulletin, and one of his paper was abstracted in bulletin of the American Meteorological Society as a paper of note. So may I, with the permission of the chair of our university librarian, Dr. Nimai Chansaha, may I request to our uh, speaker, Dr. Ghosh, please. Start. Thank you very much, Dr. Koshik Ghosh, uh, for your nice introduction and a big hello to everyone and a very good morning. It's a great pleasure to be here and deliver something on, uh, on behalf of Vishwavarati. I would like to thank uh, especially to Nimaida for uh, inviting me to deliver a lecture on, uh, on this type of topic. So before I start today, I would like to give a caveat that uh, I have been speaking on LMS uh, since long and there are uh, many official workshops of five days, six days, Three, three, I can remember. So, so I will not be talking much on LMS because people, people are tired of hearing these things before me. I mean, from me. So here today, I have uh, prepared uh, my talk on how can we apply AI tools in our teaching and learning process. So I'm sure many of you are practicing this, and if you are, then it will be repetition to you, and we can discuss uh, on implementation part as well as how can you make it better. And if you are not using it, then I would say it will be uh, introduction to you. And uh, you also please join us to practice these things. I hope you would be liking this. So I am I'm now um, sharing my screen so that you can see. So the presentation will not be, you know, people. Presentation mode Okay, okay, so I can fine. Okay, so so learning management system. AI tools for academic discourses. So here we will be emphasizing on AI. So very briefly, I will be just uh, covering the LMS if somebody has not been uh, introduced it before. 
So we all know that LMS are actually software application for performing academic activities. And it is installed on a server and accessed through a web browser. That is basically what an LMS is. What does it do? It makes the learning process more organized. It is interoperable, operable and durable, accessible, maintainable, adaptable and reusable. That means once you make something, then you can use it year after the another and you can modify that one as well. Now, obviously, there is a need of teacher studying in this regard, and I am sure that after COVID, many people are uh, using these things. And using these, we can make our courses more interactive and engaging. And so this is no need to explain further because we now all know how LMS can help us in a situation like pandemic. The advantages are other advantages, if I say from the institutional side, is that uh, it attracts a better grade in NAG. UGC also recommending this type of uh, softwares or uh, platforms. And nowadays, all tests are online, so we can practice online tests uh, using this LMS, just like as students have to face in NAG, GATE, SET, and other. Uh, competitive exam so that if we use then students will not be facing any trouble when they will be in real exams like competitive exams. Now this is a reference from UGC where they are suggesting long back in November 2019 that we should use it mainly uh, open source learning management systems and uh, they have specifically mentioned Moodle and we are also using the same thing. Now, again, UGC is uh, recommending the same thing, May 2021 model, which is an open source. And I'm sure many of you, all of you know what open source software is and what are the benefit of those. We don't have to buy. We can change, customize things according to our needs. So these are very, uh, so again, they are, they are saying that cloud-based cloud LMSs should be uh, placed in institutional domain and all those things. So we are happy to announce that we have already done this. So many people are also using this. Again, there are some of the LMSs. Now, again, people uh, may be confused that what type of LMS should I choose? Then they can uh, review these seven type of uh, criteria before choosing a LMS, choosing an LMS. And uh, I would say what we are using model, which is uh, almost qualifying in all these criteria. So that is a great thing. And there is no uh, need to explain these things further because people are uh, aware of these things. So again, these are repetitive slides. There are some global players who are using these. Some statistics are also shown. This is up to July 2020. And then this is January 2022. So you can see how the usage has been increased. So again, some of the Indian players who are using this. And after that, I'm sure many of the institutes have started their own learning management systems in their own domain. Here are some national uh, level institutes. Now, in our uh, Vishwavarati, the LMS is hosted at this IP address. Anybody can um, verify it. Many of our faculty members are also using this. So these are some. Uh, advantages or characteristics we can say in our LMS we are providing right now. As we have already explained beforehand also that what we can do, we can uh, handle many difficult times like COVID situation, we can do lecture, we can share our uh, study materials to the students, we can communicate with them through the message option. We can take online tests with proctoring. We can um, we can evaluate online tests. So those all are kind kind of um, known to you. Also, these are some other uh, practices what people can uh, perform here. So like this one, I would like to highlight once more that. Uh, this. Um, Assignments with annotations means one students are uh, submitting their assignments, a teacher can uh, annotate those and save so the students can also see from their end that what are the problems they are uh, 
they are having in their right of entry only. Like this one, online tests, including the descriptive type questions, those are also very much um, uh, very much uh, possible in the LMSs. Now, here, if you open this, this will be looking like this, and I will be showing a hands on on this. Hello, hello, sir. Hello, hello, sir. Yeah, please. So sorry to interrupt you. Uh, the slide is not changing. Is it from the beginning? Yes, sir. Is it from the beginning? This is learning. Okay. Uh, Just a minute. So, sorry, sir. Something very wrong. Stop sharing. Just enter screen for choice. Choice to the best, man. Now is it? No. It is not showing, but uh, I'm sorry. It should be. Interesting from the heart. Not changing this, not changing. So I think the same problem was there on the day one. I also pointed out that. So no. Uh, is, is, it, now already. is it sir why more more yeah, we can see why Moodle. Yeah. okay so i think no but here again we are not able to So direct uh, slides over that to be one. You can have selection there. Is selection the screen? Set the screen to the screen. Set the screen to the screen. Set the Okay, just please bear with us. We are sorry because of this technique. And those who are at Pishavarati, uh, probably they all know that these things are very much in practice and there is nothing new about uh, this one. Now, today my plan is to show you uh, that how AI, artificial intelligence, can be uh, used in our teaching learning process. We all know that what AIs are People are talking about all these things uh, now and then. So these are basically uh, computer codes to imitate human learning process and take decision at their own. That is basically AIs. And recently, November 2022, uh, there is a, um, a release from OpenAI where we found that chat GPT, which provides answers to all of the things. So I'm sure many of uh, many of you are aware of that. Now my take on this is how can we apply that benefit or facility to improve our teaching practices? So I'm sure many of you are using this. If you are, then can you please give me a quick yes in your chat so that we can see how many of you are uh, using this right now. And if you are not, then also it's fine because uh, this is not that somebody should be using um, momentarily. So I see that uh, Haranath Raksit is using, Sudip Devnath is using very good. Uh, okay, so two of, uh, so far we can see uh, that uh, two people are using it. I'm sure many of, uh, many of us are using it. Sometimes people don't volunteer to uh, say these things. That is also one. Important. Okay, now uh, we can use this in two ways. One is we can use different apps available online, or we can do it using directly Chat GPT or other open AI tools. Now, what can we do here? Firstly, if I say one after another, there are multiple exercises we can perform here. What does it do? It saves lots of time. And uh, that time you can use for other academic development or 
preparing for other academic activities and um, things like that. Like schools, people use a lesson plan. Now it takes long time to prepare lesson plans. You can do that in a perhaps in a minute. You can prepare a lesson plan. And if you don't like it, you can change it or you can modify it at your own. You can prepare a set of questions in no time. And the suit of questions can be MCQ, short answer type, descriptive type. And there are some apps which actually provides not only the questions, but also what type of learning objective those questions are meeting. Those information will also be given. You can evaluate a descriptive type question using rubrics. You can develop your own rubric and then you can also uh, develop AI generated videos and so many things which you can directly use in your LMS or you can use it in your um, Okay, so I think we are uh, ready with the, another okay. system. So please give me one minute so that we can uh, we can uh, show it there. Whether a write up has been generated by AI or not, that is very very important uh, point. I would like to emphasize upon. The day before yesterday, there was a session on um, plagiarism checking. So we know plagiarism is something like if you have copied from somebody else's work and uh, you, you have put it there, there is software which can be um, checked. But now the issue is, let's say somebody has generated a text, written an essay using AI. Now, how can you judge that? Most of the time, no human being can judge that that it has been written by AI. So the issue is if you are writing a scientific paper using AI and you are submitting now, the question will be, ethical question will be that, is there a creativity of yours in that paper? If not, then how can you claim that intellectuality or intellectual you know, work there? That's why many journals now, now they are modifying their editorial policies like nature group they have said that they are not going to allow ai generated papers uh, science group they are trying to they are now developing their or, or modifying their editorial policies maybe i i would assume that after a couple of months maybe we have to give a declaration that ai has not been used to write the paper or this paper is written by a human being, something like that. So this is a new uh, kind of uh, um, issue. I think librarian and other professionals who works on this can also work in this particular topic. After detection, steps may be taken according to the editorial policy and uh, or exam policy of the organization. It is not only about academic paper. Nowadays, lots of news are coming in newspapers that a sixth grader or six class six student has answered his assignment questions using AI. Now, what the teacher is going to do if he or she assesses that the, the, the student is not capable of writing such a kind of um, answer, then what she do? He or she do then because that is a kind of not done by the person. So, so that is issue which we can think of. Uh, what are the advantages? As I mentioned, it helps to save a lot of time and effort which are mechanical and repeated. That is what machines do. Now, it uni unifies the evaluation process and assessment process. So this is very interesting thing like uh, when we are assessing scripts and we sometimes are very much concentrated, sometimes very much distracted and we what say sometimes that all evaluations not at par with regard to um, with regard to the kind of 
considerations made. Not only that, let's say there is a 1,000 people are giving an exam and say 50 teachers are evaluating them. So the evaluation will be kind of, uh, the variations will be there because human beings have their bias, their own uh, way of judging things. So we cannot say that all judgments are, uh, are, are unified. But if you judge something using AI tools that you can claim that uh, it is an unified judgment. You can give uh, the, the, the essay to AI to judge on a given set of criterion to be judged and it will judge on the basis of those criterion and it will also provide you some feedbacks that why it is judging like that. This is a very important uh, tool which you can, uh, you can think of using. It makes the entire teaching process very organized and hence more effective. So we, we say that before you go to class, you take a proper preparation. If you don't, then you are going to mess around the entire class. And we also, when we were student, we used to, uh, we used to assess whether the teacher is prepared or not. I, I'm, I'm sure our students also um, capable of assessing that. That means when you are prepared, it will be organized. When you are not, it will not be an organized lecture or organized class teaching and so on. And that is going to hamper your teaching quality. So if you wish to make it effective, then organized, then you can take help of AI tools. It also provides more room for practicing poor academic activities like developing a new research idea and organizing academic events like conferences. Because you see, the time you were spending for repetitive works is now done by AI. So you are having more time which you can spend for some core academic development, which AI cannot do. Like if you wish to think of developing some research idea related to your neighborhood and so on. Okay. Now it professionally uh, develops teachers like uh, Chad GPT can support teachers in their professional development by providing access to educational resources, uh, research articles and pedagogical best practice. Like if you wish to, know that what are the best practices now, right now going on for the world. If you Google it, you will have thousands of references you have to read and you have to combine and make a uh, term paper or make an idea about that. But if you write to Google, uh, chat GPT, it will give you right now in a 10 lines or something like that. It can assist in staying updated with latest teaching methodologies, what I just mentioned. Students can use it as a personalized tutor. That is a very good thing. They can also use it for improving their writing skill through its feedback feature. Like, let's say I have written something as a student and I am fearing, I'm scaring to go to my teacher because he will be saying that, okay, it is nothing, it is rubbish, just go and do it. Maybe you get some scolding and something like that. So people are scared. So they can put it to AI and it will be giving the feedback. And that's really a good thing. Nobody is holding, but getting the feedback so you can improve the writer. It can assist students who are learning a second language by offering translations, language practice, and so on. It's available 24 seven. That's a very great advantage. And I think that is also uh, availability is also possible for LMSs as well. So these are some advantages. Okay, let me give you an example. So I just wrote that uh, that please provide me 10 key points I should know when studying about Vishwavarati Shantanandu. Now you will be amazed to see that that these are the 10 points I grabbed from AI tools maybe in 30 seconds. Let me uh, read those out. I mean, all you can read those, but I have uh, colored some of the lines because you have to be very careful about that. I am going to describe that part also in the limitation section that the information may not be true always. You have been have. I mean, uh, this third point it says that it is a central. It is the only central university in India that has been awarded the highest grade of A plus by the National Assessment Accreditation Council which is not the fact. So if you put it 
as a true document, then that may be a mistake. If we go to the seventh, the university has a number of international collaborations with universities in United States, Europe, and Asia. That may be true, may not be true. You have to verify that part. Eighth, Vishwarati has a number of cultural festivals such as Poshmela, Vasant Utsav, and Ravindra Utsav. I think the third one may not be uh, the, the, the correct answer. So, but other points, I am not reading out those all eight lines, but you can read at your own, but you can see that other 10 points are perfectly all right. I mean, those are all true facts about Vishwarati. Okay. So this is how you can uh, feel. Okay, now coming to the next, how to perform it, as I was mentioning um, during the disruption that you can use directly the chat GPT. It's a generic pre-trained transformer based on large language models. It has been, it has taken the world a storm. Almost every sector is going to be affected by this. Since it has been come into effect in November, 2022, Lots of things are going on. Debates on the ethics of using AI, especially for writing, are going on. This is also one point people should uh, debate upon. Okay, you can also do these things using AI apps. Why? Because those are easier to use than doing through chat GPT. Basically, like using other apps on smart devices. Like we download an app in our smartphone and we use it. So if you download a, an, an AI app and you can use it, so you don't need to go to the uh, chat GPT itself. So we are listing some of them. There are many actually. So education co-pilot, SciSpace. I would uh, specially say that this is more effective for research. I'll be demonstrating some of uh, its features. Slide GPT to develop PPTs, as I said, lesson plan generator, agent GPT, question well, conquer.ai, chat GPT, it's a generic in nature. So these are some of the names which you can uh, take help for uh, apply AI tools. So all, all apps are not similar in features. And uh, I would say that uh, okay, it's better to go for a demonstration at this point of time because in that case, it will be easier for us to judge these apps and uh, the listing what we did here is based on this. So before we go to the uh, demonstration part, let me talk on some of the limitations. Right now, AI tools are modeled only up to the information as of 2021. So if anything has happened after 2021, that may not be there. And if you are writing a scientific paper and if you wish to create a list of references on that topic, you may not be getting the references or works that has been done or published after 2021. So you have to be very careful about that. AI systems are costly to develop and maintain, hence can always be free. Right now, many of the apps and chat GPT all are free, but we don't, uh, we cannot uh, guarantee that how long it will be. So we have to be careful about that. Citation should be avoided using AI because sometimes what happens is it generates citations which are not existing. Sometimes this is also very, um, annoying, but you have to be careful about it. As I mentioned, information always may not be correct, as I showed you regarding Vishwarati, cannot debug a code, okay? It can write codes, but it cannot debug a code. This is very interesting. AI-generated articles or texts may not be treated as products of human intellect. This is very important. May not be, but that depends on the uh, policymakers and how you are looking at it. It's almost possible to diagnose an AI generated text by a, it is almost impossible, sorry. It is almost impossible to diagnose an AI generated text by a human. If you read something like as I showed you in the 
couple of slides back that uh, 10 points was written by AI using, uh, I mean, about Vishwamarati. All points were correct, but some were not. Sorry, all points were not correct. So, but, but it's very difficult to say that that was not written by a human being. That is why it is very interesting. Now, AI-based LLMs, large language models, do not repeat the same answer for a repeated question. If you ask, again, the same question, write 10 points about Dishwati, it will be throwing some separate 10 points. So this is another uh, interesting feature. So uh, my uh, recommendation would be, it's important to note that while AI can be a valuable tool, it should not replace the role of human teacher. It's no way. Now it's best used as a complementary resource or aid to support and enhance the teaching and learning process. Like calculators, it reduces human labor for computation, but it does not increase or decrease someone's math thinking. So if we use this in that line of thought, maybe that is uh, what we can recommend. Okay, so this is uh, from the uh, presentation part. If you have questions up to this, we can answer or I can go directly to show you something uh, directly. Do you have any questions up to this? I mean, browser. Okay, can you see the screen now? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, thank you for your confirmation. So I'll be putting this one for my reference. Yeah. <clears throat> so let me go to first uh, education co-pilot, a co-pilot education app. So I'm clicking on this. I think I have to log in again because in my system, I already were logged in. So. Yeah, so we are here, once you logged in there, you will see many options in the dashboard. Let me go to the workshop first. There are multiple options, recipe builder, quiz builder, lesson plan, educational hangout, handouts, and so on. Let me, okay, uh, let me go to this one, quiz builder. 
please name this uh, who is on say just this one who is on visual multiple choice type questions now you can have these options but you have to upgrade to pro but let me go by this topic plus keynotes let me uh, prepare some questions for maybe undergrad students so probability you see okay so it's working on this we should include questions related to basic probability concepts such as sample space outcomes and events these are the things it is uh, showing you now if you click on the generate questions and it's working on this it's working here you can see generating quiz template so that is actually really it's uh, working on that particular quiz making so once it is done you can see the questions right away yeah you see the questions are there what is the probability of an event occurring if all outcomes are equally likely so i'm sorry many many of you may not be from statistics or mathematics background i am i am from statistics background so i got inclined to this particular topic but uh, uh, my apologies for that i can take another topic no way uh, no problem so you see we got five questions and those who are from mathematics background or statistics background or those who have some idea regarding statistics or probability they would get these questions and also you can see the answers are there so you can understand that maybe within less than 5 minutes i could generate a set of five multiple choice questions i can create a new question and so on okay this is one i i have to show many things so that, okay export to pdf means you can generate you can if you click here the question will be uh, saved in a pdf and it will be so i click on so it will be saved so this is probability now let me give a try so when i clicked on export to pdf it got downloaded into your desktop right away so this is how quickly you can make it so what i did i gave the topic and standard of students right i can change it as well so let me give okay Say photosynthesis of uh, okay photosynthesis 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 and let me the level is say class ten or class eight. Click here con contacting the mothership and then it will be changing. which should cover the topics will be changing see the definition of photosynthesis the equation of photosynthesis the role of sunlight in photosynthesis and so on okay now if you click on that new quiz it is generating the quiz template so i hope you could follow that how easily you can create a set of 10 5 questions in no time with the answers as a teacher you do that at home or in the school or office just uh, you have to pay some time obviously so that time is now you can do other work while you are generating the question from ai tools yeah you see we got uh, five questions on ai tools 
I think many of you are having the idea about photosynthesis. It is about making uh, food by the by the plants. What is photosynthesis? The four options are there. What is the equation of photosynthesis? This. So you can delete if you don't like, and so on. Okay, if you click to share, then last time why we, we downloaded it. Now, if you click to share, then you get this one. And uh, some, <coughs> okay, hello, some made a quiz using AI and they want to share it with you. Here is a prompt and so on, and you can do that. Okay. So, Actually, I'm not able to see all the options, maybe. Okay. So this link you can give and get it done. Okay, so this is one, one thing I could show you using Copilot. Okay, let me see some of the questions. Okay, there is, there is no question. Now, I was here in workshop. Now, if you click on the recipe builder, topic or lesson, again, let me give the photosynthesis. Or you can also suggest some of the topics. Class level, again, I am giving class eight. Now, what you are looking for, lesson plan, PowerPoint presentation, context builder, educational handout. You can develop all four of these using a single uh, option called a recipe builder. Generate resources. If you click, all the resources will be generated maybe in a couple of minutes. I mean, not a couple of minutes, maybe within two, three uh, maximum, because it is developing four things lesson plan, PowerPoint, and context builder, and so on. That's why it will take little time. We have to wait while it develops. So the PowerPoint also, we can see how does it look once it is developed. And you would see differences between the apps. Some apps, this thing do better, some apps, that thing does better and so on. So that's why you may have to roam around which one is good at what particular job. That depends on the subject, that depends on the requirement or level of the teaching and so on. Because like lesson plan, normally normally in higher education we don't use, but, but somebody can plan other ways also. Okay, while it is doing its job, you can also ask me if you have any question up to this. Yes, Shutapa uh, here. Is this uh, free to use? Or is it paid? Yeah, yeah, so far it is free. So far it is free. We are not sure how long it will be free, but uh, it is free as of now. Like you see, the photosynthesis educational handout, it has made and uh, PDF is available. Photosynthesis lesson plan is, uh, is available now. Now, uh, again, context builder PDF has been done. Now the PPT will also be. There. So let me find the lesson plan. I clicked on there. You see lesson plan photosynthesis aims, object aim, objectives, possible materials needed, anticipatory set, and then uh, moderated model practice, guided practice, independent practice, common areas of struggle, closure, everything is there. Okay. So you can change it according to your need or you can go by this one. Photosynthesis context builder. If you go there, you will see lots of vocabulary terms. What is the photosynthesis definition? And chloroplast, chlorophyll, light, energy, carbon dioxide. So it is kind of, and you can save it also. And okay, by the time the PowerPoint is also generated, if we save it, and uh, I can show it there right away unreadable 
and do you want to recover from it? Okay, let me show. Okay, we got the PowerPoint of on photosynthesis. You see, it is editable. There will be many uh, AI tool which will be providing you the PowerPoint, but you cannot edit that one. But here you can edit it if you if you try to show that one. Okay, I think these are the. things it has written okay now okay there are some apps which also generate some nice images and paste it there at their own here it is not uh, there but there are many which does it so like that again let me go to this uh, where i was yeah here yeah. So this is uh, what we had now. PowerPoint is also there. Lesson plan is there. Educational handouts I found. Context builder is also there. Unit plan is also again actually uh, unit plan is also again a lesson plan. So I am not going to show it because I have to show some other things as well. So again you can see there are some other options also like PowerPoint generator. You can generate the PowerPoint independently. You may not be needing all the four things. The, as you are able getting from the recipe builder. A context builder also you can get other students report, like we have to give a detailed report from the, of the students, especially in the schools, you can generate it there. You can revise email texts and so on. So many things, real world benefits and all those things. So you can explore it and, and you can find how it is working. So I am leaving particular this app, particularly this app and going to something else. I'm closing the windows. I hope I could show you some of the uh, glimpses of it. Now I'm going to something. Called size space, which is very interesting, especially for researchers. And uh, this one this is a very interesting tool and uh, i have to log in surely i am so i think oh sorry but it's not giving me the, okay so what it does let's say you have a paper i mean a research paper and uh, i'm not sure whether there is any research paper here or not yeah, let me so everywhere you have to log in. Just a minute, uh, Google is verifying that I am the person because I don't use this system very often. Okay. Try on.
Okay, so now uh, you are on, so you can drag a PDF and uh, drop it here and let me just um, just i'm not sure whether i would uh, get really or not some of the paper if you get pdf i think this one yeah so this is one pdf i would like to download it and uh, so Now I am here. I am clicking on this download. And so we get the Julian of it. And it is it is called Bruno Brick. Now upload this file. You can search also from here. Okay, I am uploading this file. Now what it does is once you here now on the left side it will be the paper on the right side there are some summaries generated by the ai tools now if you select a portion just say okay let's say this one oops yeah you select this portion up to this and you click summarize the summary will be here that means uh, how long yeah I, I have selected up to this it is giving me the summary here okay so this is one way otherwise there are some ways okay explain math and table so you take any table if there is so there is a table you select this table and the explanation of the table will be available here. Okay. Okay, one more interesting point I would like to share with you here that in this interpretation, if you click the language, you see there are so many options, English, Japanese, and so on. I am interested in Bengali because I am my, you see Hindi is there, lucky. So if I click Hindi and if I select this, let's say this portion, any portion I am asking. Summarize. Now it will show the summary in Hindi. So this is a great uh, advantage for, you see, the summary obtained in Hindi. Now I am interested in Bengali, so I click on Bengali, uh, I mean Bengali, yeah, here Bengali is there. So I'd like to have explanation of uh, these findings, maybe up to this. I click, click and summarize. Now Bengali is the language you, you see that the summary of this particular selection has been provided in Bengali. I think many native Bengali speakers or many Bengali, I mean Hindi speakers and so on, which uh, which people does face some some issues in understanding, they yeah. can change and understand what is the benefit of, I mean, so. Uh, Marathi, okay, Nimayla is asking for Marathi, let me see, I think it should be there. Hebrew, Russia, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Irish. Malayalam, Malayalam is there. Uh, Maltese, Marathi is also there. 
So Marathi is there. Okay. So I am selecting this portion and wish to have summary of this one, though it is already only few lines. So this is a great advantage for you see the Marathi version is there. This is one part. Okay. Now what else we can do is you can see that uh, yeah citation generator if you wish to cite this paper you can get the citation generate cited uh, and, okay please take from your source i think Add manually why it's asking. Okay. Yeah, this is a, okay. Let me go to the citation afterwards. I'm sorry, I could not find it right away. AI detector is a very important tool, which I was mentioning that whether a written document has been generated by AI or not, that you need to verify upon. That how to do that. Let me click some of the text from here. Okay, this one. Okay, copy and I am pasting it here. Now analyze. AI detection report, it has 21% chance that the, the document has been generated by using help of uh, AI. So low AI, one sentence, two sentence, uh, moderate AI. So this is one interesting feature that how teachers or anybody can judge whether a written document has been generated using AI or not. It's kind of plagiarism checking what we do uh, in, 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 in case of submission of journals and so on. And uh, I think, yeah, upload PDF. I think it can also give you some um, if I go to home, if I go home, you can uh, search for papers like climate change, just for example. If you search, you see lots of papers are coming. You can filter out them. PDF available, open access. Let me click on open access. Then uh, you see 85,164. When I clicked on open access only, then out of 85,000, it came down to 50,000. Now, if you if you filter it by year, last, let's say I want to work on last three years papers which were published in, uh, uh, in the topic climate change. Last three years, last five years, because sometimes teachers say to the new scholars, okay, go to the library and grab last five years papers on climate change. You click, you can give a filter or I mean, open and end here also. Apply. So it was 50,000. Now, if you click here, then you it got 4,773. So last three years papers on climate change. You got, you can filter by authors. You can filter by institutions. You can filter by topics also like global warming. Okay. So, so right now two filters are on open access and year. If I click on climate change also and apply this one, then the count will be down again. So it got down up to 2,346. Let's say five minutes summary. If I wish to get a text of this, okay. Now you see, some uh, ready-made questions or uh, ready-made topics are already there in the size space. So contributions means what does this paper contribute to the society or science or whatever you call it. If you click here, then the AI generator will give the actual contribution of this paper as it thinks right, rightly. See, we got in Marathi. I'm sorry, I did not change the language. I can change it to English. Okay, let me change it to Bengali. And then I'll be changing it to or okay, English, no problem. 
you can save this as note also you can copy this you can share this and so many things and practical implications if you wish to have if you wish to have practical implications you click on this that means don't blame me that i am discouraging people to read the entire paper but what happens is sometimes you do not have much time to read a paper thoroughly what we do we collect a set of papers and go through the abstracts and then we filter out that okay out of this 50 papers i will read thoroughly these five papers or these 10 papers so that work is being done by ai tools and in no time so that saves your research time of your scholars and whatever is whoever is are, are working very considerably okay now if i am not able to understand in english i can change it to bengali very quickly and uh, practical implications again i am asking so without reading of the entire passage i am finding four bullets in my own language that what this paper has the what is the practical implications of this work like prostavito poddhati ti biniyogkariter dara byabohar kora jete pare jalbayu poribortoner biruddhe hedge prokash se trade sampad byabohar kore jhuki kichu so there will be some distortion in the language obviously but you can take english as a standard interpreter and you can take it but the understanding thing can be available in your own language methods used if you wish to have the methods used you can get it from this ai tool so size space is a incredibly incredibly very nice thing uh, about uh, performing uh, i mean pursuing research you see এই কাগজে ব্যবহৃত পদ্ধতিগুলি হলো দ্যাট মিনস মেথোডোলজি দে হ্যাভ ইউজ লাইক দিস সিমিলারলি ইফ ইউ ক্লিক অন দিস ট্রেস নাও ইন দ্য অনলাইন ওয়ার দিস পেপার হাউ মেনি সাইটেশনস আর দেয়ার হাউ মেনি রেফারেন্সেস আর দেয়ার ইন দিস পেপার হাউ মেনি অথার্স আর দেয়ার কন্ট্রিবিউটিং ইনস্টিটিউটস টু সো দ্যাট মিনস আউট অফ দিস ফাইভ অথার্স দে আর ফ্রম টু ইনস্টিটিউটস you can see the related topics of this paper and so on one interesting feature i'd like to show is uh, image interpreter because this is very much important i'm i'm not sure whether uh, reading full screen and if there is any image and uh, i would happy to interpret an image okay let me check explain okay this one if i click you see i selected the image now the image explanation is generating by the ai you see it is clearly stating the i mean important points of this image in five bullets chitra dui w s j jalbayu poriborton sambad suchoker ekti drishyoman uposthapana wall street journal prokashite jalbayu poriborton somporkito sambad nibondho gulir patho bishleshoner madhyome suchokti nirman kara hoyeche suchokti shomoyer sathe sathe w s j jalbayu poriborton er sambader frequency ebong onubhutir porimap kore and so many things so image interpretation sometimes we don't understand an image if i am not from the domain then i may not be able to understand but you can interpret the image nicely using size space and abbreviation also if you select this abbreviation then uh, explain text so this is an abbreviation right so i don't uh, i don't know what cnn is so i just selected this portion and i asked for the explanation it has written cnn ekti sangbad outlet ja crimson sarbujer totthyo sangraher antarbhukto eti so it has explained the abbreviation also okay so what else are there to share with you let me uh, yeah it is it from the full screen 
and then AI detector, I told you. Okay, and then, okay, library. Library is an interesting feature. Let's say if you are, you have collection. So like I have a collection on with the research and I want to upload this PDF. So what I, you click and select and it will be selected in this weather research. Another, uh, if you wish to regenerate a collection, let's say I'm just uh, statistics. So this is a folder kind of thing where you can keep all the papers related to this topic and this, this analysis kind of thing here. You can also import from Jotero as well. So I am sure many of you use Jotero, so that can also be uh, take as a reference. Now and uh, with the research, okay. Now paraphraser also you can use with journal article. And okay, I was working on that PDF, right? And so I can. What can I do? A citation generator. So, okay, high citation generator, book chapter, journal, web page, and so on. Um, what are these? Citation style and all those things. Start in If I go to no, I don't have any paper here, that's why it's not showing. Upload PDFs, you can select and then Okay, the, that same paper again, I am taking and let's say citation generator. Why it's not coming, it should be what was that in this let me see whether it generates or not yeah so this is it is generating man you can and you can change the style and so on so the point here is what i am trying to make is that there are so many options what you can use and develop your research career and research style and so on so what i showed the summary the paper summary you can do at a go what is the contribution of the paper in your own language and so many things because i also wish to move to another one that's why i am uh, leaving this particular uh, app do you have any question on this hey audio not working Bruce? Hello, 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 testing one. No, sir, audio is perfectly working. Okay, actually, I see he had two messages at 12 15 and 12 17 that audio is not working. So I thought we did not see the messages actually. This would be message to the So, size space, I think uh, you can uh, use it at your uh, own research, and I think you, you found it uh, useful. I, I definitely find it useful. Okay, now uh, coming to uh, again another uh, tool regarding uh, generation of slides that is again uh, only for slide if i have i'm not sure which account i'm 
so here what you can do is ai power ai powerpoint presentation so i want a slide take about feature of ai or let's say i want is is slide take on the photosynthesis theme only two themes are available here create the take i think it will ask for okay so it is creating it it takes some time uh, it will take uh, around 3 4 minutes okay so this uh, this particular app takes little time but it also imposes some images on the slide now uh, it will so it is creating the introduction part and uh, so time taken by this app is little uh, negative point then another negative point here is it will not be uh, editable means you cannot download um, and edit it until you pay for it they ask for money if you pay then it will be editable to you but you can share the ppt uh, as a link for sharing there is no price or something like that so whatever you are generating using ppt you see the time it takes when we make a ppt for photosynthesis or something like that i think teachers can uh, clearly imagine how much time does it take okay so let it do that one and let's see what else are there for uh, describe lesson plan generator this is also one app you can just type lesson plan generator and it will be <clears throat> generated okay so let me um, do the lesson plan generator so you click here the first option you select the grade maybe say eighth grade subject english okay topic say um is say writing i am not sure whether i am writing it properly or not and we have to give an email uh so yeah so by the time the photosynthesis has been generated the slides on photosynthesis i have chosen the uh, this background so that's why it is coming this background you see uh photosynthesis is the process by which plant algae and some bacteria convert light energy into chemical energy in the form of glucose it is vital process for sust sustaining life on earth as it provides the basis for most food chains and produces oxygen that we breathe so this is introduction you can use this chloroplast structure function structure function one picture is also there the description is here chloroplasts are uh, organelles responsible for photosynthesis and so on so the entire description is here you can see pigments atp nadph and so on the write up is here kelvin cycle so factors affecting photosynthesis light intensity and temperature the write ups are here so you got a nice presentation so earlier time when we made it using copilot there was no image but here images are there okay so the conclusions is there and so on now if you wish to share this you can see there is a share option you share copy it so the link is shared so i can uh, what i can do is i can share this link in this particular uh, chat bot so that you can verify whether this link is working on okay 
So you please verify open in your browser whether this particular presentation is working on. Okay. Now, so you can see how AI tools can help you in making your teaching a, I mean, teaching aids, I can say, because we, we definitely use PPT in all our lectures. And not only that, there I gave, um, I gave the choice like that. I want a slide deck on photosynthesis. Uh, I mean, uh, let me for class five, if I do. Okay, it takes some time. That's why I'm not doing it again. Okay, if you click here, download, then what it asks for money. If you give this amount 2.5 US dollar, then what it does, it will be high quality, editable, PDF also you would get, Google slide format you get, file downloads up to 90 days you would get, perfect for online use for editing, printing and so on. So that means as uh, Sutapa Mamo was asking there whether it is free or not. So some are, some are free, some are not. And it is things like that. Okay, link is working. Okay, thank you. Uh, Bandana Khandilwal and Ram Prasad Majumdar, thank you for verifying this one. It does actually. So this is one, uh, again, it's a lesson plan generator as I was generating lesson plan. You see, it has generated the lesson plan on what? Uh, I think I gave English and essay writing. Two lesson objective to recognize the elements of essay writing and how to structure an essay effectively. Opening, how you are going to open your class. Introduction to new material. Guided practice, implement independent practice. Now closing, how to close your essay and stuff like that. Opening five minutes, introduction, new material, 15 minutes, guided practice, 15 minutes, independent practice, five minutes, closing five minutes. So that is how 45 minutes class it has divided. So this is how lesson plan can be generated using AI tools with no time, in no time. Now let me show you something else, okay. Uh, this. Uh, Agent GPT also again the same thing. Question well, Conquer AI, both these tools are uh, for generating. Okay, I can delete some of these items. I think I should, uh, I should log out from here. So, yeah, I am logged out. This is also done. Okay, now I am going to this um, question well. This is another AI tool for generating questions. So you see this image has been generated using AI. Interesting, now try it out. So question well is a tool for generating questions. Uh, sign in with Google, let me sign in there. Again, it's asking you, oh, goodness. It is. Yeah, this time we are fortunate it did uh, give me the access very quickly. Okay, now uh, select all. Okay, you can, you have to select either of two. See, edit, create and delete only the specific Google Drive files that you use with this app. Okay, I can click here. And view and manage your forms in Google Drive. No, I'm not going to give all access to all my Google Drive. Continue. And again, okay, continue without Google Forms export. I am a teacher. Okay, now you see, this is a general concept, the reading, discuss and conduction, on conduction. So, structure of an atom so this is something and then 
you can generate multiple choice questions so let me take a random reading on anything say again I do okay. I have to select a little more. Click and so here I'll be pasting that. Okay, so and grade save offset. Undergraduate. Okay, so learning objectives you can uh, give option or otherwise not English language. Upgrade if you upgrade, then it will be other options fill in blank short answer. But I right now I don't wish to do the generate sets. So what I did, I give a piece of text and asked it to generate few MCQ type questions. Okay. So it is creating this may take few minutes. Okay, by the time we can go to another that is conquer.ai. <laughs> okay, so it is again uh, talking about photosynthesis. You can customize multiple choice. So you, you see this particular app is giving you the option which the question well was not providing you. Multiple choice, read and respond, fill in blank, mixed. Mixed, what you see, if I type mixed grade, say uh, eighth grade English. Use my own source material. That is also one good option here in Comcast.ai. Means if you have the material using which you wish to make the question, then you can use once you click here, it will ask for the material. Let me paste it here. I have already selected. So maximum you can give 1110 words. I have given 408 words. So what I did. Uh, multiple choice quiz type, multi, not multiple choice, mixed. There were options, but I chose mixed and then generate. It will probably ask for, I think I have, uh, Uh, I am an educator, so I am giving you this and say uh, you see, uh, I gave a short piece on photosynthesis and asked a mixed type of question that is MCQ, fill in the gap, read and write, I mean, short piece and you see for the questions are getting generated. So these are MCQ type and you see there are two correct answers. It is MCQ, but it is more than one correct answer. This is interesting. I think all of you know that uh, how type of exams change at many times and this multiple correct answer in MCQ is a very good option. Again, you see, this is a drag and drop option. May match and then it will be something else, I guess.
and I think, yeah, question will also have done this one. So we were doing simultaneously on two uh, apps. One is uh, question well, another is uh, conquer. Copilot, we have done it earlier. So Copilot also generated questions. So actually many apps does same type of work, but there are some plus and minuses. You see, you can export this question. You see question, you can export to Moodle. You can export to Canvas. These are LMSs. And you can question, take this, take, take this question as, as a Google Doc. I mean, sorry, in Microsoft Word document, Docs. You can select some of the questions which the AI has generated. You can take a printout of those and uh, You see in the left hand side, the questions are not multiple choice. You see, explain how carbohydrate molecules are assembled during the Kelvin cycle. This is a writing question. Define oxidation and reduction in context photosynthesis. See, I know nothing about photosynthesis when we started in school level. I forgot those entire things, but I myself could generate few questions of photosynthesis. Maybe I can give to my child who is studying in this particular grade and he can practice using these things. So this is great advantage. You can filter according to learning objectives. You see the learning objectives are also listed here. This is a great feature of question well. Here this one, the learning question number 10, what is the name of the stage in photosynthesis that does not require light? The answer is light independent reaction. Learning objective of this question is explain the difference between light dependent and light independent reactions. That is what this question serves the purpose. How do uh, herbivores obtain energy from photosynthesis? The answer is by eating plants. Now learning objective, this is going to fulfill is understand the relationship between sunlight, chlorophyll and glucose production in photosynthesis. So there are, we can make questions in CQ at our own, but some many times we forget or many times we fail to relate those according to learning object. So that is what you can get from here. So those things were not provided by Copilot. It is not provided by photosynthesis, I mean, uh, Conquer AI. It was not provided by, I think some other, I was using. You can filter question type, multiple type, fill in the blank, short answer type. You can filter, so this option you would have after you pay. So this is what you can do using this particular app question well. And uh, pro probably, <clears throat> okay, now coming to this one, Conquer AI, this is also, so I provided it this text, and asked these questions. You can see the text on the left hand side and the questions on the right hand side. Okay. Now you see the correct answers and all those things. Here are questions are of different types MCQ, multiple correct answer, matching, and so on. And uh, if you wish to take a preview of this test, you see none of the AI apps provided you preview for the test but if this one conquer.ai provides that so this is the like if you are the student this is how you are going to get the question paper in real time so i think many of you have the idea how gre i mean uh, not gre uh, how ielts exam like exams of english as a foreign language takes place those who go to abroad for research they have to appear for the test there is a reading comprehension test like this that reading will be on the left hand side the questions will be on the right hand side let's say i am selecting randomly so i can read and i can answer so here you have to see select only two options if you don't select two then it does not allow you to go to the next like one selection it does not let me to go next now, uh, if I select three, then it does not allow me to do that because select only two options. 
So I selected again, I select and uh, you see this is another type. Move the answer to the correct boxes. Now a pigment in chloroplasts that absorbs energy from blue and red light waves. What is that? Chlorophyll, oxidation, reduction, photosynthesis. I think um, those who are from biologists will be the correct person to answer. Let me this one. So what I can do is I can select this one. If this is the correct answer according to me, then I select that and paste it here. So that is the answer. That is the way I can answer. This is called drop and drag, drag and drop. And I think kids will love this type of test pattern. Always writing, writing or selecting may not be the using, I mean, uh, accept, I mean, attractive feature. So just I'm randomly putting the values. Don't take it otherwise. Oops. Now I'm moving to the next one, the same thing. And so that is how you can answer. There is another option here in this. I think I should stop somewhere now. Mm, that is, uh, which gives you a short text and then the question. Here it is the text is the entire text. But there for each question, there will be a text. So I exited the, mm, exited the, Review and there was no option. You can share this one. It will be saved in your Google form. So that is basically how you can use Conquer AI and question well. If you have any question, please feel free to put those. I don't see any in the chat box. Okay. Now I think I have another thing. So okay, now I can go directly to the chat GPT to show you that how we can do all this stuff, what I showed you in a single thing called chat GPT. So before uh, I start that one, uh, do you have any question? I again repeat this one. And so, so you know what chat GPT is. It's a product of OpenAI, a company based in the US. Now, if you log in there, Wow. Okay, now there are many things uh, what you can do here. I want this to go here. Now, what it does is chat GPT is a kind of uh, application what uh, as if it is a human being sitting behind the computer and whatever you ask, it provides you the answer. So let me start preparing a lesson. Prepare a lesson plan for class uh, for science. Okay. For photosynthesis for class seven grade. You see how quickly it is providing you the answer, the lesson plan. You no need to go to any app or something like that. I'm sure many of you have used, though only two persons have uh, responded that they have used it. But uh, if you are not, please do and enjoy. Let's say, what are the, you see, total duration, objective, materials, needed procedure introduction five minutes 10 minutes and this one gives a detail and you see the answers provided by different apps is different so you can judge which one is better for your students or your work importance and recap of and conclusions 
But one thing is regarding lesson plan, everybody does it for 45 minutes. That means all classes are mostly 45 minutes. Now you say at the end, it gives a note, depending on the available time and resources, you can also conduct hands-on activity and so on. If you are not happy with what you get right now, you can regenerate the response. So what I did, I just clicked on regenerate the response and it, it gives me a seven, 60 minutes, um, I mean, a lesson plan for 60 minutes lecture. For the same batch of students, like class seven batch. And it not only gives you the answer second time, but it also asks you what is the response better or worse regarding with respect to the previous one. That's how it learns itself. It will follow your pattern as well. That is what type of writing you are looking for. What is your style of accepting? That's why next time when you ask for this, it will provide answer according to your your trend or something like that. Okay, so let me, as I generated, so provide me 10 points on Vishwa Arati. I just provided a random asking. You see it is providing me 10 points. Some of the facts may be not exactly correct. Some of the facts may be correct, but what most of the facts are, Vishwavarati established by Nobel Laureate Tagore in 1921 is a renowned educational institution in India here. There are 10 key points about Vishwavarati. Founding. Vishwavarati was founded with the vision of creating a center of learning that combines the best of Indian and Western educational traditions. Location, it is located in Shantiniketan, a small town in West Bengal, India, amidst a serene and natural environment. Cultural integration, Vishwavarati aims to promote the integration of Indian culture with international perspectives, fostering a global outlook among its students. Gurukul system, the institution follows the Gurukul system of education, emphasizing personalization and holistic learning rather than traditional classroom-based education. Course and courses and faculties. Vishwavarati offers a wide range of courses in humanities, social science, natural sciences, fine arts, and performing arts. It has various faculties, including the faculties of art, science, music, dance, and education. Nobel laureates. Vishwavarati has been associated with Nobel, several Nobel laureates, including Rabindranath Tagore, who was the first non-European Nobel laureate in literature. The institution has attracted renowned scholars and artists from around the world. International students. Vishwavarati attracts students from different countries from promoting cultural exchange and diversity within its campus. Shantiniketan. The institution's main campus is known as Shantiniketan, which means abode of peace. It is a serene and pictures, pictures, picturesque campus that uh, inspires creativity and love of for nature. Santiniketan Sangit Bhavan, Sangit Bhavan Vishwarthi House houses the Santiniketan Sangit Bhavan, a renowned music school that offers education in various Indian classical music forms. Posh Mela, one of the most popular events associated with Vishwarthi is the Posh Mela, a three-day fair held in December every year, showcasing traditional music, dance, and arts and crafts. Vishwavarati continues to be a prestigious institution that upholds the values of holistic education, artistic expression, and cultural diversity, contributing significantly to the educational landscape of India and the world. So here you see the piece of work I showed you in the PPT does not match with this one, but that was also generated the same platform chat GPT. That's why I told you the answers it provides all the time are not the same. So you have to be very careful about that. Not only that, if you regenerate the response again, you will get a different answer, but most of the time the answers will be matching with the facts. Now, let's say if you wish to uh, ask 10 questions based on this, these texts on Vishwavarati. So, provide me five MCQ 
on the above text. You see, it is providing the MCQ very nicely. Now, it also provides the answers. Okay. So, if you are not uh, aware of different apps I was talking about, you can simply go to ChatGPT and ask according to your need. So, this prompt, what, is, what should I prompt that may be uh, different from person to person, but it will be giving you some answer which will be helpful to you. Now, as I was saying, uh, I, I think I should <laughs> not continue more. I, I had a I had a intention to show you that how can we evaluate descriptive type questions using rubric because evaluating descriptive type questions how we do that in our LMS is something different how it is being done in AI systems okay now let me show you quickly because I have done it for you I I I uh, I was thinking to do it okay i can re redo it right now no problem uh, so in rubrics what is rubric is a set of criteria based on which we evaluate a script or a presentation or something like when somebody is presenting we we we, we, we take three points like how what is that how the topic is important what is the style of presentation and uh, how much he could answer after the presentation. These three branches will make categories and then we mark accordingly. Maybe somebody is very good at answering questions but may not be good at presenting. Maybe somebody has made a very nice presentation, very nice question answer bit, but the, his topic of discussion mm -hmm. is not good. So that's why the, 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 the marks vary. So that's why the rubrics are made means some standards criterion on basis how we are going to mark the students or the presenter and which makes the marking system uniform because sometimes students and uh, everybody uh, complains that uh, we did not know that this will be a criterion for for the judgment so it is better that we should provide the rubrics to the student beforehand that okay there will be the grammatical checking there will be checking of this uh, spelling mistakes there will be checking of how you organize the lecture or the essay that will be there will be checking on how you have uh, concluded something like that so how you have served the purpose of the writing so on so um, okay so coming to this Evaluate the essay, how to, how to evaluate an essay type question using ChatGPT. What I am doing is evaluate the essay written by a student of class nine. You have to give the, the, the standard of the student based on the rubrics. The rubrics are like this, six, it will be given six, uh, grade six, essay de demonstrates excellent composition skills, including a clear and thought-provoking thesis, appropriate and effective organization, lively and convincing supporting materials, effective diction and sentences, sentence skill and perfect or near perfect mechanics, including spelling and punctuation. The writing perfectly accomplishes the objectives of the assignment. That means if somebody is graded six, he has achieved these criteria. If somebody is little inferior, then these criteria are satisfied. If somebody is far more, I mean, little more inferior, then few more criteria are not satisfied. So grade one, composition skills may be flawed in two or more areas, diction, syntax, and mechanics are excessively flawed, fails to accomplish the goals of assignment, essay on environmental assessment. So these are the rubrics, then there is a colon and then we are putting the essay. So how we are doing it, let me do it once more. First, what it needs to do, evaluate this on the basis of this rubric, on the rubrics. Then we are putting the rubrics 
Then we are putting the essay. Now you see the feedback it provides. I think, uh, yeah, the, the essay was a bit big. Yeah, so evaluation of the essay. You see how elaborately it is providing the assessment. Based on the rubrics provided, I would evaluate the essay as follows. Content according to content five, organization wise it is graded four, thesis wise it is graded five, development wise four, diction and sentence skill four, mechanics four. Overall, based on rubrics provided, I would evaluate the essay with a score of four. Means this student, what has been provided, he will be scored four, where six is the highest grade. It demonstrates above average accomplish, uh, above average composition skills and accomplishes the goals of the assignment with an effective approach. With some improvements in organization, development, and sentence skills, it has the potential to reach the higher school. You see, when some student receives such an elaborate feedback on his or her writing, they will also feel how, where their mistakes are, where are the pockets they can improve upon. Now, as we are not uh, habituated in grading system, mostly we are habituated with marking system. So we are doing the same thing, but in spite of giving the grades, we are giving marks, maximum marks 90, minimum marks 45. Now, accordingly, uh, it has graded. Now, if you see the answer, overall, I would evaluate the essay as 80. Means the student has obtained 80 marks as he has written. And the evaluation was based on the rubrics we provided. Every university has or department has their rubrics on essay type questions and so on. Right? So this is how you can evaluate a student um, on essay type questions. And it is not only about evaluating, evaluation. It is about how the students can improve upon their writing skills. You mm -hmm. see, when we are teaching 100 students, we cannot provide uh, feedbacks to 100 students manually one by one. And if you try to, if you try to do it, it takes longer time, we get tired and so many things happens. But here, through this type of systems, each student is getting kind of individual attention to how they can improve. Okay. Now, somebody can say that I don't know how to develop any rubric. That also you can do using chat GPT. I, I wrote it. How can I develop a rubric to evaluate an English essay written by 10 graders? Means a class 10 students is writing an essay. How can I develop a rubric to evaluate that? So it is providing me the answer. Developing a rubric to evaluate an English essay written by 10th graders requires considering various aspects of writing skills and content. Here is a suggested rubric with different criteria to assess the essay. Thesis statements, 20 point. Now, again, there are three subtopics, clear and concise thesis statement that presents the main argument or focus of the essay. Demonstrates an understanding of the topic and purpose of the essay. Provides a roadmap for the essay's organization and development. That should be in the statement. If these three criteria are fulfilled, then he or she will receive 20 points. Similarly, organization and structure, development and ideas, language and style, evidence and support, conventions and mechanics, overall feedbacks and impact 10 points. So each criteria can be assigned a specific point value and the total points achieved can be used to determine the final grade for the essay. You can adjust the weightage of each criterion based on the importance you place on different aspects of writing. It's in, important to provide clear descriptions, the descriptors for each point range within each criterion and so on. Now, uh, evaluate the following essay written by ninth grader based on following rubric. So the rubric I developed, I use the same rubric for the same essay. I was talking about. Now the evaluation, if you see uh, by the chat GPT is based on the provided rubric, 
here is an evaluation of the thesis according to the thesis statement out of 20 it provided 14 for the organizations of and structure out of 20 it provided 16 and so on so total score the candidate received is 89 out of 100 and overall feedback is overall the essay demonstrates a solid understanding of the topic and includes relevant information the room there is room for improvement in terms of thesis statement clarity depth of ideas critical analysis of evidence and overall impact providing specific feedback to the student on each children will help them help them understand their strengths and areas of improvement encouraging them so it provides you a detailed feedback on that okay so that is how things can be done using chat gpt so whatever you do it automatically remains saved in your account if you wish you can delete those by clicking here and you need you may need to upgrade your uh, account for updation they take i think 20 dollar per month and in that case you will get some more um, priority and something some more features will be available to you so i think i should stop now because i have uh, been i am speaking for a long time and you may be tired of hearing me and lots of people also have left anyway so if you have any questions still you can ask me or uh, you can i would i would suggest that you should practice that as i was mentioning in the slide that all apps are not similar features so i have listed few of them which you have experienced so i think i no need to uh, read them out again so i think i should stop here and thank you very much for your patience here my request to all the participants if any question please furnish directly to the uh, speaker uh, dr ghosh or uh, you may submit your question through chat box or directly to the uh, dr ghosh or you may send your question later through mail also thank you manik vishas and uh, harunath ramprasad ji okay uh, thank you manavendra maji Thank you, Bandana Ji. Thank you, Ramprasad Ji. Thank you, Himika Barman. Okay, if you have any questions, you can email me at tithankar.bhosh at vishwavarati.ac.in. But I would encourage you to use that and I would recommend that take it as an aid to improve your teaching and uh, delivering of contents and so on, because we have to keep on moving and uh, updated ourselves. That's all. Thank you very much. So I think Kanda, it is better to furnish your mail ID through chat, chat box. Okay, okay, let me do it. Hello, Koshi. Yeah. yeah, we can hear you. Please go ahead. Uh, so, uh, can you provide a uh, presentation of uh, all the session? No, actually, our uh, this such kind of uh, lecture session with the video of the lecture session will be uploaded in our YouTube channel. Okay. Can you provide the link of your YouTube channel, sir? So you may go directly to the YouTube, the Vishwamitra Library Network. Vishwa Bharti Library Network. We'll give it. We'll give it. Okay, sir. Okay. Just, okay. just a minute. We'll give it. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. If there is no more question, then you can go ahead for a lot of thanks. Okay. Actually, all are uh, giving the thank you, etc., etc. No specific question. 
hopefully they will send the, their question letter through mail. Okay. So may we push it forward? Uh, yes, yes. Concluding that. So at first, uh, thank you to the chairperson, Dr. University Librarian, for organizing such kind of uh, special session, uh, basically the six days, and all the participants hopefully enlightening and us to and uh, at last but not least i congratulate and thank you to the today's speaker our colleague none other than dr tirthankar ghosh so thank you very much tirthankar da for your uh, cordial such kind of hands on training in spite of the uh, initial technical problem <laughs> So, yeah, I also feel very bad about that because that distracts others. So this is the this is the part of sorry, the I'm sorry, I'm this is the part is... of the technology. Yeah, so, yeah. Thank you very much, and hopefully we will uh, deliver uh, uh, and letter uh, deliver in the forthcoming session uh, too also. So thank you very much, and thank you to the technical support team, basically Dr. Jishnu Mondol, Shomo and many others, those who are uh, just uh, helping us for uh, conducting such kind of special session throughout the year. And basically, I am now, at last, I thank you to the participants, those who are spent their valuable times in spite of the uh, vacation too also. That's why we are organizing this time in a blended mid, mid two. And this is the last announcement. Uh, this is we have completed the day three successfully, and tomorrow there is another special session on access to treasure of Cambridge University Press, basically the online platform. And tomorrow's the speaker, Mr. Suborno Banaji from the representative from the Cambridge University. My cordial uh, request to you all: please join tomorrow in the same time. So thank you all. Just no, please. So Sigda, will the chat box se link to the DVC YouTube to bolle Okay, now the YouTube uh, channel of Bishwabharati Library Network is now available. So you may. Uh, watch our previous tutorial too and all the video will be uploaded very soon in our uh, YouTube channel. Please share and subscribe the YouTube channel of the Vishwabharati Library Network. So thank you once again. Thank you, Jishnu too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, close the meeting. Okay.